We would do, I want to say it was roughly 90 pages for a 44 minute episode, about twice what everybody else was doing in town. And were there issues, sound issues again, people talking? Yes, about Yes, initially the sound people said you can't have everybody talking at the same time. And I said, we must have everybody talking at the same time. And I said, and me and the editors will sort it out, we'll figure it out. And I was very lucky, a guy who was a good friend of mine who I'd met on Breaking Away was an amazing editor, a guy named Artie Mandelberg, who's a director now and a producer sat there and we would piece these things together and he was he was really gifted at it eventually brought his brother neil mandelberg and neil won one of the few emmys that the show won for cutting uh dream sequence always rings twice and uh but we always mic them both simultaneously and i and write them so that they talk on top of each other and then we'd stage it so that you know and my thinking was i always said you know, in television, the sort of conventional way that you film television is you film a master, and a master in television usually means a sort of a sloppy long shot so that the geography is clear, and then you do overs and close-ups. And it's a very efficient way to shoot. It's not terribly artful. What we would do is we would do these, we'd rehearse a master all day, and choreograph the camera. We had a wonderful cameraman, a man named Jerry Finneman, um, we re rehearse these things all day, the movement, literally let the camera move and choreograph the frame. And then, and then once we had that, we didn't shoot any coverage. So we shot in a different way than everybody else. Um, and the show's looking. If you look at them, part of, I think, part of the reason they have so much, um, so much narrative thrust is because of that. We're not constantly, the, the, the speed, the, the illusion of speed is not conveyed because there's fast cutting. The illusion of speed is conveyed because there's fast talking, fast movement, and the camera is, you know, following them and being, or being pushed back by them. Um, and it was a sort of Hawksian sort of approach to it. I wasn't conscious of it early on, but the more I, and I was sort of illiterate, I wasn't all that literate about old movies. Interestingly, I mean, Bruce, Bruce introduced me to um, Preston Sturgis, who I wasn't familiar with. Sybil, obviously, you know, mentioned Howard Hawks, and um, I was familiar with the sort of the Marx Brothers and the Leo McCary of it all, but not the, you know, not the more, more eloquent and more classical stuff, you know.